Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to have a lecture on powder bed fusion processes type of 3D printing technique. So, as the name suggests, here the raw material is a powder and it is fused using various thermal sources so that it consolidates and forms a solid pass. So powder is fused or consolidated using various thermal sources. The most common thermal sources are lasers. Okay. And electron beam lasers can also be used as a thermal source. Also solid state lasers or uh, those like ruby lasers or palladium lasers that can be used. Now let us see the various mechanisms of powder fusion. So we have a total of four mechanisms for this. Let us start with the first one. First is solid state sintering. Okay. So, in this, the particles are fused together in their solid state only, but at elevated temperatures. So, this is basically fusion of powder particles at elevated temperatures but without complete melting. It is to be noted that it is at elevated temperatures although but without melting. Okay. So, suppose here these spherical balls are your uncentered particles. So, naturally when they are in contact there will be a pore in between them. Now, as these particles start to fuse together by diffusion, there forms a neck. Okay, and as a result, the pore size reduces. So, when this material has consolidated fully, we have much reduced porosity, although. It cannot be eliminated entirely. It cannot be eliminated entirely. Okay. So, what is the driving force for such a sintering? So, driving force is the minimization of total free energy of the powder particles. What is minimization of total free energy or the surface energy of the powder particles? Okay. And primary mechanism is diffusion. Okay. When these particles uh, fuse together at elevated temperatures, the total surface area decreases. As you can see here, the surface area is higher. But as it fuses here, the surface area is much lower. Okay. So, this driving force is also directly related to the surface area to volume ratio of the powder particles. The larger the surface area to what, uh, volume ratio, the greater the free energy driving force. Higher the surface area by volume ratio greater is the 
driving force okay uh, so, so greater is the free energy driving force so smaller particles experience greater driving force for necking and consolidation rather than larger particles so as a result smaller particles because their volume is low and surface area is high so they experience much higher driving force and they center more rapidly and can initiate sintering at lower temperatures they center rapidly and can initiate sintering at much at lower temperatures that is why it is always easy to center nano powder rather than the micro or meso powder so that these diffusion rates increase exponentially with an increase in temperature hence the sintering becomes extremely rapid as the temperature approaches the melting temperature although even at higher temperature diffusion induced solid state sintering is the slowest mechanism next is chemically induced sintering so this method makes use of thermally activated chemical reactions okay the chemical reaction is thermally activated that is it needs certain thermal energy between two types of powder particles to form a by product which binds the powder particles together so this by product basically acts as a glue between the powder particles okay so this is primarily used for ceramic materials because of as they are difficult to melt because they require very high temperatures now one of the example is laser processing of silicon carbide in presence of oxygen when silicon carbide is processed in presence of oxygen it forms silicon dioxide which acts as a binder and binds together a composite of silicon carbide and silicon dioxide another is liquid phase sintering and partial melting so this basically consists of a mixture of powder particles wherein there is one of the powder particles is a low melting temperature binder particle while the other is your actual particle now on applying the heat source the low melting temperature binder particle goes into the molten state first while the other actual particle that remains solid so the one that has gone into the molten state will act as a glue and that holds the other powder particles together okay so in this actually uh, the one of the powder particles goes into other liquid state whereas how is it different from chemically induced there there were thermally activated chemical reactions okay so in this you can have different configurations one is separate particles of binder and your powder second is composite particles third is coated particles where your powder particles are coated with a low melting phase 
and the fourth is indistinct mixtures or that are formed by micro alloy now the fourth technique of fusing powder particles is full melting here the powder particles are melted completely to fuse together okay here the layer below the current layer is also partially melted so if this is your current layer that is being printed and this is your previous layer then it is necessary that a part of this also melts so that there is good bonding between these two layers to ensure good bonding and interfacial properties also if this is your first scan this is your second scan track and this is your third scan track so it is always good to have some melting of the previous scan track so that this inter uh, layers uh, inter track bonding is also good so this is basically done for engineering metal alloys okay this is basically done for metals and their alloys also some polymers are also processed using full melting okay so some examples are titanium stainless steel cobalt chromium alloy etc they are typically fully melted okay and this results in more desirable properties than cast iron cast parts or wrought parts from their identical alloys so what are the materials that can be processed using different powder bed fusion mechanisms they are polymers and their composites metals and their composites ceramics and their composites okay so we have sls and slm one is selective laser sintering another is selective laser melting so for melting we can have polymers or metals because it is really hard to melt ceramics because of extremely high melting temperatures but for sls different materials can be used such as polymers and composites okay then metals and their composites and then ceramics and their composites so let us check some of the process parameters of powder bed fusion processes so main parameters are subdivided into laser related then powder related then scan related that is how the powder bed is scanned by the laser and then temperature related so laser related parameters are laser power laser spot size pulse duration and pulse frequency okay so laser power laser spot size and scan uh, scan speed together they determine the energy input into the system so this laser power laser spot size and scan speed they determine the energy input into the system and that is needed to fuse the powder into a consolidated part the longer the laser remains at a particular position the deeper the fusion depth will be 
because that area will be deposited by a higher amount of energy. And as the energy in that particular region is higher, the melt pool or the melt that is being formed will have larger diameter. Okay. So, pulse duration is basically the time for which a single pulse of the laser strikes the powder web and pulse frequency is basically the intervals after which the pulse are uh, the laser beam is irradiated on the powder bed. Let us discuss the material parameters that are related to the powder. So its shape, size, type and properties influence the process. It influences the shape, size, its distributions etc. They influence the powder bed density, the flowability properties of the powder and thus the spreading of it on the printer bed and its laser material interaction properties, basically the laser absorption characteristics, laser absorption characteristics. Okay, so finer particles provide greater surface area and absorb laser energy more efficiently than coarser powders. So it is always better to use finer powder particles. Because they can absorb higher energy. So powder density, powder bed densities typically range from 50 to 60 percent for commercially available powders and they can be as low as 30% for ceramics because of their irregular shapes. The higher the powder packing density will be, the better the mechanical properties will be because this directly affects the density of the consolidated part. The particle size distribution directly affects flowability and how it is compacted. Particle shape or the powder morphology. So spherical particles are known to improve the powder flowability. So we are advised to use spherical powder particles because of the proper flowability properties and the quality of the layer. Then Material properties like thermal conductivity and layer thickness. The thermal conductivity should be good enough so that it is able to observe, it is able to absorb the laser energy that is required to melt it. If the conductivity is high, the heat will be dissipated faster and it won't melt. So, it should be of an optimum value. The other process parameters are scan speed. So scan speed directly affects productivity and the density as well because it decides the energy dense, energy input into the system. And higher the scan speed, faster the print will be completed. Next is scan spacing. It is basically the distance between two consecutive scans. So if this is your layer. So this distance is your scan speed between the center lines of two consecutive scan tracks and a certain amount of overlap as discussed earlier is necessary to ensure good bonding. Then layer thickness. With an increase in layer thickness, production speed is faster. But when we decrease it, we can have better surface finish and better precision. And last is scan pattern. We need to adopt proper scan strategies so that the final product is free from any kind of residual stresses. 
or distortion or warpage. So the last are temperature related parameters that are the powder bed temperature. So the powder bed temperature should be heated initially before it is struck by the laser so that steep thermal gradients can be avoided. Next is powder feeder temperature and temperature uniformity. It is very necessary to maintain uniform temperature to avoid any kind of thermal gradients and thus the residual stresses which are very detrimental in effect. Now let us move to selective laser sintering. This is the basic schematic of the process. So we have a CO2 laser, the X and Y scanning mirrors, the laser beam, the powder bed, infrared heater and counter rotating powder leveling roller. Okay. So here this CO2 laser emits a radiation that falls on these X and Y scanning mirrors. The main function of these is to control the X and Y motion of the laser on the printer bed. Now this IR heater is used to preheat the powder bed okay so that to avoid any kind of to avoid any kind of sharp thermal gradients and hence the residual thermal stresses okay and this counter rotating pounder leveling roller what it does is whenever one layer is complete the powder tank from below comes up and this roller takes out a certain amount of powder and spreads it over the printer bed in such a manner that the layer is uniform. So, this process works by using localized heat. This process works by using localized heat. uses localized heat to fuse the powder particles. Okay. Now typically a continuous wave or mo modulated CO2 laser is used with powers ranging from 1 to 250 watt. And more recently, NDAG lasers and other fiber lasers are also being used. So here, the powder packing density on the powder bed affects the density of the final part. Higher the packing density, higher will be the density of the final part and higher density gives better mechanical properties. Here one of the advantages are sub elimination of the requirement of support structures. Elimination of the requirement of support structures because they are not required for overhanging parts here. So, suppose this is the final centered part that we require, this T kind. So, we can see this and this are the overhang parts. In conventional case or in case of FDM, 
the support structures might be required here so that this overhang can be supported. But here this loose powder that remains on the uh, printer bed provides sufficient support to this solid part. So the general density obtained is 50 to 62 percent. Now let us check the working principle. So this process consists of three stages. We will run through them one by one. So first stage is a layer of powder is spread that is typically 0.1 mm thick. Okay, and each layer is preheated as have been told iteratively is preheated before the scanning to minimize what to minimize the third uh, heat input from the laser And also preheating results in uniform bed temperature okay and thus prevents warping or distortion due to residual thermal stresses prevents warping of the part. Okay. Second step is the laser ray radiation. The laser radiation centers the powder. to form the part as directed by the CAD file and the last step is the elevator drops through a distance or the platform drops through a distance or moves down through a distance equal to the layer thickness and the and this three step process is continuously repeated until complete part is printed okay now let us check the importance of certain aspects this preheating is very necessary why to maintain uniform temperature Okay, so that it minimizes the heat input from the laser and prevents warpage of the part that is any kind of distortion due to non-uniform thermal expansion and contraction.
okay now after the object is fully formed the piston or the printer bed is raised or low uh, the printer bed is lowered drops through a distance excess powder is simply brushed away uh, when the part is complete the bed is raised to so that the part can be removed and excess powder can be brushed off okay typically a cool down period is required typically some cool down period is required so that the parts uniformly come to a lower temperature okay that they can be handled and exposed to the ambient temperature and atmospheres if they are prematurely exposed this is important if the parts are prematurely or when they have not reached a suitably low temperature exposed to the ambient temperatures that are quite low then the temperature in the printer bed then the powders may degrade in the presence of oxygen and because at higher temperature oxidation can take place and parts may warp or curl due to no uneven thermal contraction all right now let us discuss some features of sls so similar to all 3d printing techniques it is also done in a layer by layer fashion okay now new powder layer is spread directly above the previously center layer okay now as we have discussed the densities range from 50% to 62% typically and mechanical properties are higher or better if packing density is higher so scan patterns and exposure parameters
play a major role in determining the mechanical properties so what are these scan patterns let us discuss those so these scan patterns are like in the how the layers are scanned using a laser so it can be like suppose a strand a uh, scan strategies can be your object is divided into small squares so this is your object and it is divided into small squares and then scanning each square with short track is highly beneficial as it eliminates the possibility of accumulation of stresses residual stresses in a particular direction so random scanning is often utilized so that there is no preferential direction random scanning is often utilized so that there is no preferential direction for the residual stresses that are induced because of laser scanning so this can be like if this is scanned in this direction this can be this then this then this then again so it can be like this then again this and so on and so forth so these are some scan patterns or scan strategies and exposure parameters are the parameters related to laser like the laser power pulse duration pulse frequency scan speed etc okay next is the accuracy of this process is about Uh, from plus minus point zero five to point two five mm, and as discussed, the build strategy doesn't usually require support structures. or overhanging parts except when using certain wax powder except when using certain wax powders so the products can be porous and that can be reduced by mixing powders of different size
okay and last is like a combination of materials can be used these materials have already been discussed earlier okay so that will that was all for selective laser sintering now let us move to selective laser melting so let us first go through the working principle of selective laser melting here the heat is generated to melt the powder particles to completely melt and form a melt pool this melt pool then solidifies as a single layer of the final object slm is very similar to sls in principle the only difference is in the mechanism of powder fusion in the mechanism of powder fusion in slm we have full melting of the powder particles whereas in sls powder particles are not melted instead they are sintered okay so the because of the melting requirements higher power is required so that there is higher energy density in slm because of higher energy input required for complete melting of the powder so the powder particles that are exposed to the laser they melt away and fuse together so they are first change into the molten state and then they solidify whereas rest of the powder particles remain loose and they act as support to the overhanging part similar to what we saw in sls so the remaining loose powder particles provide support to the overhangs since laser power is too high high temperatures are reached in the powder beds of the orders of thousands of degree celsius so at such higher temperatures the atmo uh, atmospheric oxygen can react with these metallic powders and cause oxidation and this oxidation will obviously degrade the quality of the powder in presence of atmospheric oxygen so hence this process needs to be carried out in an in inert environment to prevent oxidation and degradation and subsequent degradation of the powder and final part so we can use argon gas environment so this is inert in nature so after the entire fabrication of the part the remaining powder can be collected and sieved for reuse while reusing this uh, remain uh, remaining powder should be mixed in certain ratio mixed in certain ratio 
with the unused powder because its properties would have changed after interaction with the laser so let us look at some of the advantages so since we have complete melting so the density and the strength are high so we have better mechanical properties in comparison to SLS. Next there is negligible waste as the unused powder can be reused by mixing it in certain ratio with the unused powder. Complex geometries like internal conformal cooling channels, internal channels or lattice structures can be easily made because the loose powder will act as support. So when the part is complete, it can be taken off the printer bed and the excessive powder can simply be brushed off. We can use wide range of materials because of the powder nature and no distinct binders are required because there is full melting of the powder particles. So the melting doesn't require any external help. This melting can be done as soon as the temperatures are reached. Rapid melting and solidification results in unique properties and these are sometimes better than the cast or wrought parts. Okay. Because of the rapid melting and solidification we have unique microstructure. It is very different from the ones that we have with cast or rod parts. So there are certain disadvantages as well that are high cost of the equipments. These are very sophisticated machines and they bear high cost specifically the laser source that is really high and the, pre uh, and the precise machines cost higher because of the R&D associated with them and their precision and they have long processing times because the 3D, to 3D print it takes really hours. High temperature gradients because of alternate cooling and heating cycles. Alternate heating and cooling cycles. These lead to thermal stresses causing delamination that is one layer, uh, the two layers that are stuck fused together, they like break off from each other. That is delamination and warpage of the component that is curling of the components at the base. Now because of the high temperature and melt pool instabilities, various defects like internal pores higher surface roughness can occur because the, the temperatures are really high and the melt pool is also instable because of higher temperatures. So we can have various defects like internal pores and high surface roughness. So because of these defects as well, post processings are required like machining and polishing because the surface finish is not that good. Now we face certain challenges in SLM or SLS or commonly called as powder bed fusion processes. First is surface finish, surface machining, polishing and short peening are required to obtain the final and the finer surface finish. because inherent surface finish is very poor. Inherent surface finish is poor. Now surface roughness depends on the laser processing parameters and the melt pool stability. Higher the stability of the melt pool, better the surface finish. And 
the laser processing parameters need to be optimized to get proper surface finish. Now we have density issues or porosity. So laser scan speeds affects the density of the final part. So at higher speeds, what happens is that we have less density or higher porosity. At higher scan speed, so the laser has lesser time. Laser has lesser time to interact with the powder at a particular location. So since it has lesser time, so the energy input will be lower. Hence there will be lower fusion of the consecutive scan tracks or the layers. As a result, we'll have lesser density or higher porosity. Whereas at low scan speeds, we have high relative density that can be approximately close to 99%. At low scan speed, laser has sufficiently high time to interact with the powder. As a result, energy density at a point is high, energy density or energy input is higher because of the longer dwell time and melting is complete. Like it gets sufficient time to bond to the consecutive scan tracks and to the below layers as well. Next is residual stresses. The alternate heating and cooling cycles create compressive and tensile stresses also called residual thermal stresses. Residual is that is they remain in the object even after the removal of load. Okay. So when we are 3D printing, what happens is, suppose we have printed one layer, so it is heated, when, then it melts and then solidifies. After solidifies, it has cooled down. Then we have printing the next layer. This is heated and it melts. So heat is transferred from here to this below layer as well. So this is heated again and then it solidifies. So it is cooled again. So in that way, there are multiple cycles of heating and cooling. Okay. So this can lead to crack generation, delamination or part distortion. So these are very detrimental in effect. These residual stresses are very detrimental in effect. These can actually lead to complete distortion of the part. The last challenge that we face in these powder bed processes are the balling. This happens when the molten material fails to wet the substrate due to surface tension. Hence, balling occurs. That is, it is basically the formation of bead-like spherical balls. of the molten material on the powder bed. So it causes roughness, rough and spherical bead shaped track. So this causes high surface roughness and increases the porosity. So if this is your surface, if balling has occurred, then your track will something look like this is a bead, this is a bead, then this, 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 this kind. So there is porosity as well in between associated with this and these balls already cause high surface roughness. 
So what is the basic cause? So this occurs when the total surface area of the melt pool is higher than the total surface area of the sphere of same volume. Okay, this is the condition. The surface area of the melt pool is greater than the surface area of the sphere. So in such a case, surface tension acts and it always moves towards minimization of the surface area. Surface tension always acts towards minimization of surface area. And as a result, instead of the melt pool, we have spherical beads, spherical shape beads. So hence, as a result, the surface area is reduced and we have more stable form. But this stable form causes distortions of a part that is by bringing in porosity and high surface roughness. So these were the challenges. I hope the process is clear for both selective laser centering and selective laser melting. Thank you.